More now from eCancer Television here from Rome and the conference on blood cancers in the elderly. Now we're going to be talking about the most common cancer in the West and the most common cancer in the elderly with Professor Clemens Martin Ventner. Professor Ventner, what is the issue with elderly patients with this particular cancer, chronic lymphocytic leukemia? Uh, in former times, we used to treat um, all patients with uh, standard chemotherapy called chloramicil. Nowadays, uh, we are aware that it's very important to assess comorbidity first and then to define the appropriate treatment. So if an elderly patient is fit, he could uh, stand more than just in chloramicil. So this patient we would offer, for example, also a chemo immunotherapy, so a combination of a chemotherapy and an antibody. Otherwise, is the, if the elderly patient is unfit, chloramicil would be the standard. Now, chloramicil is still being used in older patients quite commonly, but the uh, FCR regimen, the fludarabine cyclophosphamide, rituximab, is now increasingly popular. Can you tell me why there are changes and what your counsel, what your advice would be about looking at older patients? So F FCR, as you mentioned, the triple combination based on uh, fludarabine, cyclophosphamide and rituximab has been approved um, by the FDA and also by the European uh, authorities uh, for frontline treatment in CLL. And this includes also uh, elderly patients. If they are fit using FCR, we can show not only an uh, improvement in progression-free survival, so disease-free survival, but also in overall survival. So this would be the option for an elderly patient being very fit. Now, you've been working with the German CLL study group, and I know you've got a big new study coming along, but this is a disease with great variability. The outlook can be quite different from patient to patient. What would you advise doctors to do when they meet the average patient? Right. Before initiation of treatment, we propose to assess a cytogenetic uh, marker profile. So based on cytogenetic aberration, we know that there are patients roughly 8 to 10 percent uh, that have a very high risk or ultra high risk uh, disease. Uh, these patients, if they are fit, would be moved to transplant very quickly. Otherwise, the majority of patients, uh, 90 percent roughly, uh, they uh, will uh, most likely benefit for, from standard treatment. Now, there are markers of very poor uh, prognosis. Uh, the 17p deletion, I believe, is one of them. But is it clear from other genetic markers who your patients are, wh which are the ones that you should treat more intensively? Uh, as you mentioned, the deletion of uh, chromosome uh, 17p is the most uh, accepted uh, cytogenetic aberration. We also know mutation of the p53 gene located on chromosome 17 is uh, in the same sense uh, ultra high risk uh, aberration otherwise uh, we would not uh, adapt treatment based on less important cytogenetic risk uh, parameters but you said you would adapt treatment depending on comorbidities could you That's expand right. on this and the main issue of course that you're talking about here in Rome, comorbidities that affect older patients. Right. Uh, we introduced um, semi uh, objective, uh, the quantitative assessment score uh, scoring system called the cumulative illness rating scale system, SILS score. Um, this has been introduced uh, as, a, as a 14 point uh, bullet questionnaire assessing comorbidity and cancer patients or leukemia patients with a SEAL score above 6 would be assessed to be uh, not so fit and uh, these kind of patients would get a less aggressive chemotherapy. Uh, on the other hand, patients with a low SEAL score would also uh, be offered an aggressive chemo immunotherapy. And to what extent is age the issue as compared with comorbidities for instance? Age is no more the, uh, the uh, discriminator in this case, it's comorbidity. So in our trial we had an 81-year-old gentleman 
uh, that uh, has been offered also the FCR, the uh, triple combination. This gentleman was uh, jogging. Uh, it was a very fit uh, elderly CR patient, but uh, we can prove that based on this scoring, um, if, if you select your, your, your patients, they will stand the treatment quite well. The side effects are not different to younger patients uh, that are fit, and also the outcome is very similar. And could you very briefly <coughs> tell me about the new randomized study, CIL11, that you're embarking upon right now? What is that going to tell you? It does include immunotherapy, doesn't it? The CIL11 trial you mentioned um, is the trial for the elderly but unfit patients, the so-called slow-go patients, we call them. It's uh, um, the, the, the uh, basic treatment is chloramicil, but in the uh, experimental treatment arms, we add an anti-CD20 antibody. On the one hand, it's rituximab. On the other hand, it's in GO101. It's a new type 2 CD20 antibody. So we try to also introduce um, milder chemoimmunotherapy to the elderly ones that are not as fit, but we have to wait the results. Clearly, that will be very interesting when it comes out. Right now, today, though, to sum up, what would you advise busy cancer doctors to be doing about their patients diagnosed with CLL? First, they should assess whether they see a fit or less fit patient. Based on this, they should offer chloramicil as a standard for the less fit ones outside of clinical trials. If they uh, uh, define that the patient is, has, has no severe comorbidities, they should even dare to offer more aggressive treatments, including um, also antibodies plus chemotherapy. So how much benefit in terms of outcomes then, finally, do you think we could see with better selection in CLL? I think uh, we could spare side effects from uh, unfit patients uh, if they only get treatment that is adapted to their uh, fitness. On the other hand, we could also offer uh, effective treatments in the elderly ones. Uh, nowadays, we tend to uh, undertreat elderly patients, and this is just an approach to get the uh, best, the, the most if, uh, efficient, but also tolerable treatment to the elderly cancer patient. Well, thank you very much for being on eCancer Television. Thank you.